Three days to go until a crucial European leader summit in Brussels, but a deal on the debt crisis still seems far away. An impromptu meeting in Frankfurt last night failed to lead to a breakthrough. And my next guest isn't all too confident about the prospects. Louis Gargour runs hedge fund LNG Capital, joins me in the studio now. And Louis, when we spoke to you a month ago, you were saying that Greece would default and that you were underweight financials. Where do you stand now? Still the same? Um, I think in financials, we start to look at senior versus subordinate, as we were saying offline. Um, financials are not necessarily going to be completely bailed out by what's going to happen over the weekend. Right. So how, how is that affecting the way you invest right now? Because you still hold some financials. Yes, we, we, we're short. We think the subordinate part of the financial capital structure, like tier one, upper tier two, and tier two debt, are not going to be helped by what's going on. In fact, people may say that's inefficient and may short that part of the cap structure. We're very neutral. We're very cautious. Um, we think, well, it's not a surprise, that they may under-deliver. And by how much do you think? Because, you know, there's been reports floating around that we need to see something yes. in the region of 200 billion euros recapitalization for the banks. Do you That's think right. that we will see something a lot less? Well, this morning we then had a report out that 100 billion would be enough because gilts are at 111, not, a, not at par. Now, I, I think there needs to be a haircut on Greece that's realistic. Let's say 40 percent. I think there needs to be a recapitalization of German and French banks that have a lot of exposure. And I also think they need to agree. I don't get the impression that France and Germany are cohesive on this. I get the impression that they're at fractious, they're at odds. So what do you think, do you, it, seems to, it seems to be that you're thinking we are unlikely to get anything substantial when it comes to the banks from Eurozone policymakers. Well, what then? Well, okay, I think we get a big headline number, let's say a two trillion number, which is what they want to do, i.e. how big the EFSF is or how big the ECB's balance sheet. Now, the big question is ECB, mm -hmm or emergency funding mechanism and, and how it's funded and how the money. So there are a lot of uncertainties. So I think the, the, the knee-jerk reaction will be the markets will rally. Then they'll look at the details and say, well, hold on a second, it's light on details. I'm uncertain about this mechanism. There needs to be clarity. And, and the markets like clarity. So I think you might get a rally, but then you might get it fading as a result of people saying, hold on, this doesn't solve the problem long term. It only is a short term solution. And I'm unclear on the mechanism. So what does clarity mean to you? Well, Paulson with the bazooka, you must take money, we're recapitalizing the U.S. banking system. That to me was unequivocally good, positive, mm -hmm. you know, no, no, you must take money. Right now they need to do something where they seem to be working together and where the banks are definitely bailed out. It's not about Greece, it's about the banks. And of course there are those saying that look, there's actually you need to look beyond the banks, yes. that you're coming at it from, from the, you're saying that essentially the banks need to be the priority right now, recapitalizing mm -hmm. them, perhaps even overcapitalizing them, something similar to a US style TARP program, yes. but then others would say, look, you've got to shore up the periphery, you've got to have some sort of mechanism that will ultimately uh, ensure those bonds in some way, or at least underwrite those bonds yes. to make sure that the banks will be okay. So do you think that actually they need to come at it the other way and mm. look more at the sovereign situation? How long have you got? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> okay, so there's no GDP growth in Europe to speak of. The peripheral countries are now funding themselves at between 5 and 7 percent. I, you know, Italy got up there a little while. So I think the program also needs to have some form of bond buyback or some form of mechanism by which there's explicit support for the funding or the refunding of the balance sheets of the sovereigns. The problem has moved onto the sovereign balance sheet because it's gone from the private sector to the public sector. So just like Ireland taking all the bank debt onto its balance sheet, Italy is now becoming, and Italy and Spain are becoming a focus. There needs to be some form of buyback and some form of collateralization or increased collateralization for government bonds, government bond markets. Do you think that the concern we've seen in the markets, particularly when you look at French banks, their share prices has, have been hit, but then also we've seen uh, U.S. funds reducing their dollar exposure to European banks yes. and French banks specifically have been uh, really bearing the brunt of this. Do you think that those concerns are overdone, that these banks are fundamentally actually quite strong? I, I do. I actually think the French banking system's exposure to peripheral Europe is a problem, but I think that the market is overshot in terms of... Um, pushing the equity price down. Um, there are probably problems we don't know about. However, I think overall the balance sheets are in decent shape. I think you may still want to be careful about owning banks outright, but just like the Bank of America situation in the States, it, you know, it reported better than expected results. It's rallied off the bottom. So mm. we may be nearing a bottom. 
And just a quick one, Louis, because you, you said that we need, to see, we need to see more private sector involvement. They're going to have to take a, a bigger hit on see, their Greek debt holdings. But we're seeing pushbacks from the banks on this. Yeah, but okay, that's, that's not realistic, is it? If the, if the bond market trades at, let's say, 50 cents on the dollar, the Greek bond market currently trades between 35 and 65, why would you only have a 21% write down? It's, it's not the real world. The real world trades at 50 cents on the dollar. So insisting on a 21% maximum write down, mm. I think, doesn't take into account the fact that a write down needs to happen. Very similar to Latin America. You know, back in the 80s, when the Latin American debt problem got resolved, it got resolved by realistic write down and a restructuring and extension of debt and, and guarantees from the government. Louis Gargot, yeah? LNG Thank Capital you. Chief Executive, thanks very much. Thank you.